The origins of agriculture lie in the climate changes that occurred at the end of the last ice age. The height of the last ice age occurred about 18,000 years ago, or 18,000 years BP, before present. At this time, we call it the last glacial maximum. It was the time when temperatures were lowest and there was the largest amount of ice across the world. If we were to look at a coastline from this period, we would see that in comparison to the current coastline, where the beach might be somewhere up here, the sea level at this time was 100 metres lower than at present. Now in order to get a drop of 100 metres in sea level, you have to go a considerable distance out from the coast in most places. If you merely take a distance of 100 metres from the beach, you get a drop in sea level that's not very much. In order to get a drop of 100 metres in the sea level, you often have to go many kilometres from the beach. And as a result of the sea being so dramatically lower, there was a lot of land that was exposed and available for people to live on that wasn't there um, at other time periods and particularly isn't there today. So if we look at, for example, this diagram of the Gulf, we can see the Arabian Peninsula on the south and Asia on the northern side. The sea was actually at the Straits of Hormuz and did not penetrate the Gulf itself. Instead, the Gulf was fed by ancient rivers, which included the Tigris and Euphrates rivers in ancient Mesopotamia. And these flowed south into the Gulf, joined with other rivers such as the Karun from Iran and other rivers from Arabia, and formed a series of deep lakes in the deepest parts of this Gulf, before eventually flowing out through the Straits of Hormuz and into the sea. This valley would have been ideal living conditions for people because there was a lot of water, it was a well watered valley which would have encouraged plants to grow and in turn lots of animals to live there and thus provided lots of resources for ancient humans. And we think that probably the population of people in this valley was fairly high, particularly in the period as the Ice Age ended between 18,000 years ago and about 12,000 years ago, which we mark as the beginning of the current geological epoch called the Holocene. 12,000 years ago really marks the end of the last ice age. It's the period in which temperatures are rising, climate is changing. And thus, this would have been a very favorable place for people to live with these warmer temperatures and lots of resources available. Over the next several thousand years, between 12,000 years ago and 4,500 years ago, there were significant climate shifts that occurred in conjunction with the end of the last ice age. There were different periods in which these climate shifts occurred. For example, there was an alternation between periods we call pluvials, in which temperatures were a lot higher, it was a lot warmer, there was a lot more water about, the ice caps were melting, and thus there was a lot more rain. In between these were centuries where it was drier again, and the climate was very arid, and there wasn't much rain. And so in these times, plants and animals struggled. What we find is with these alternating pluvials and arid periods, we have periods where the sea levels are rising quite fast and flooding. And so at some point, the sea breaks through into the Gulf at about 10,000 years ago and starts to flood these lakes in the bottom of the Gulf. It continues over time as these wetter periods occur and so at different times there were these large flooding events. There'd be several centuries where the water was flooding in almost every year and reducing the land area available. Until eventually at about four and a half thousand years ago, the sea level was actually two meters higher than it is today. And some areas of, of ground that are today um, free of water would have been flooded in that time period. And this would have impacted the coastline dramatically until eventually the sea level settled down again to its current levels. Now if we look at the populations and the effect of these climate changes on people during these thousands of years, during these millennia that it happened, it must have seemed relentless. Every few centuries there were these great flooding events where their former homes, areas where they'd been able to find lots of resources and live quite comfortably, were now flooded and people were forced to flee from these continual floods and to seek higher ground and to flee up into the surrounding land where the ground was higher and where they could get away from these flood waters.
And this relentless pl pattern of flooding and having to flee and move their homes really impacted on the psyche of the people living there. So much so that in ancient Sumeria, in the area of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, we see in the earliest cuneiform, cuneiform tablets accounts of these terrible flood stories, floods which came from um, people didn't know where and continued for years and years at a time when the land was inundated, when they lost everything and they lost their homes and they were forced to flee. And patterns of this recurring over and over again, these terrible floods that eventually inundated their whole world. And this was occurring around the planet at this time. However, people are very creative and so they tend to respond with creative ways because there would have been a lot of stress. As people moved up into these areas, they would have come into conflict with people who were already living in these areas. And there would have been competition for resources. They no longer had the reliable um, riverine valley with its plants and animals. The animals too would have been moving into different areas and being impacted by these changes in climate. And as a result, people were really struggling to get through these arid periods in between the flooding. So they had periods of rain, but then there was lots of flooding, and periods when it was arid and conditions were very difficult. As a result um, of this, people were forced to become very creative, and one of their creative responses was to develop pottery. At about 9000 BC in the Levant, we can see pottery such as that pictured here. And the advantage of pottery was that not only could people store food, into coming years for periods when it was harder and when the climate was not as favorable but they could store the seed and the tubers which would enable them to actually plant plants if the, if the um, plants didn't manage to procreate themselves so in the years that it was hard people could intentionally plant and um, thus ensure their food resource into the years where it wasn't so favorable and in a similar fashion they could actually select individual animals who had characteristics that were useful to people and they could take the young from these animals particularly individuals that were do docile and had other favorable characteristics and they could actually feed them from their stores of food and they help the animals survive through the harsh periods as well in the years that were good that they could select good food they would select the prime specimens the largest plants with the largest um, fruit and other resources and so they were selecting always the prime examples of the plants and the most favorable animals. And by selecting these individuals, this is the process that we call domestication. It actually alters the plants and animals into domestic forms. And this is the beginnings of agriculture. As we've said, this occurred at about 9000 BC in the Levant and also in India, which was directly impacted by these rising floodwaters in the Gulf. We can see it at 8000 BC in Egypt and probably people would have learned through their trade networks of what was happening in the Levant and thus would have gained some ideas of domestication from that. However, also at 8000 BC we see the origins of agriculture in China and we don't think that there was trade between the Levant and China at this time period and also the plants are different. For instance, people were domesticating rice in China. So this would have been an independent development. Faced with the same sorts of climatic change, people in China independently developed the same ideas of domestication. We can see that by 7000 BC, domestication has spread into the Mediterranean in places like Greece and Cyprus. Now Greece and Cyprus, we know, were connected through ancient maritime trade networks with the Levant and with Egypt. And so as well as transferring the trade items such as pottery and obsidian, people would have actually transferred the ideas of domestication from one person to another. We can see that by 5000 BC agriculture has reached Europe and that by 4000 BC it has reached Mesoamerica. Well actually we think that in Mesoamerica once again it was an independent discovery. We know that in Mesoamerica people spent a thousand years developing maize from a couple of other plants, from a very small plant to a large ear of maize that we know today. And this would have been an independent um, development, again in response to these changing climate conditions. And thus, people with their creative response to stress have actually used conditions that were quite harsh and impacted on their lives in various ways in order to advance technologically and develop creative ways of dealing with these conditions and thus the origins of agriculture grow out of this period of great technological change and climate stress.